حضراتكم كل سنه وحضراتكم طيبين وبخير اليوم حدث استثنائي يعني حيث نبدا ببكره التعاون بين اف ار سي ار ايجيبشن سوسايتي اند ذا ايجيبشن سوسايتي اوف بريست ايمجينج برئاسه الاستاذه الدكتوره رشا كمال بروفيسور اوف ريديولوجي هيد اوف وومن ايمجينج يونت كايرو يونيفرستي تشيف كونسلتنت ات بهي بريست كانسر هوسبيتال President of Egyptian Society of Breast Imaging. أهلا بحضرتك دكتورة رشا. أهلا بك دكتور محمد. أهلا بحضرتك يا فندم نشكر حضرتك على المحاضرة وإن شاء الله على وعد مستمر بالعطاء دائما للسادة الزملاء بالتعاون مع الأفاضل في جميع الهيئات والمؤسسات العلمية إن شاء الله. بداية موفقة إن شاء الله يا دكتورة رشا. أبتدي إن شاء الله يا دكتور. تفضلي يا فندم. تفضلي. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Uh, يعني at the beginning I want to excuse you all that I give the lecture all in English because I promised some of your colleagues that I'll do so because they asked for, give, uh, for me to give it in English. Yeah. Uh, uh, before I give my lecture, the recent updates in mammography, uh, I just want to, uh, yeah, to announce the, the Egyptian, the Society of Breast Imaging. It's not an independent society. It's a sub-speciality of the Egyptian Society of Radiology and Nuclear, Nuclear Medicine. Uh, يعني actually, we can call it شعبة. شعبة التصوير الطبي للسادي لأنها ليست جمعية مستقلة. إحنا جزء من الجمعية المصرية uh, للأشعة. Uh, يعني وإن شاء الله يعني uh, our main aim إن هو هيكون نشاطنا أغلبه تعليمي ومن كله أنشطتنا وإحنا تابعين إداريا وماديا وكل حاجة للجمعية المصرية للأشعة. فما احناش جمعيه مستقله وهي جمعيه مش ملك حد هي ملك كل اطباء الاشعه زي الجمعيه المصريه بالظبط يعني ان شاء الله لما هيبقى في هنعلن عن بدء الاشتراك في الجمعيه هيبقى برضو الاشتراك من خلال الجمعيه المصريه للاشعه واي مشترك عندنا لازم يكون اصلا مشترك في الجمعيه المصريه للاشعه وان شاء الله يعني هنبتدي نعلن عن شروط الالتحاق وكده على الاسبوع الجاي او اللي بعده باذن الله تعالى. أه نرجع بقى للمحاضره uh, inshallah, uh, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, there's a common saying which says that necessity is the mother of all inventions. And actually, I do believe in this common saying because our futures are always based on our needs and demands. And so I'll raise this as the uh, slogan of my lecture today. Uh, going back to breast cancer, over the past few years, we have witnessed a remarkable increasing incidence of discovered breast cancer cases. And in parallel to this increasing incidence, we have also witnessed dynamic changes in the investigation and management of breast cancer. Uh, it was found that the only way to curtail breast cancer is by coupling early detection together with a proper diagnosis in order to be able to give the patients the most adequate and appropriate treatment options. And of course, we as radiologists play a fundamental role in this part. And when preparing the arsenal to fight the war against breast cancer, mammography was and still remains the first line defense. In spite of this, the technical advances in mammography lag behind other imaging modalities. And the reason for this is that mammography has specific requirements of quality standards that was told that digital imaging could not supply. Yet after the introduction of the hospital information system, the PACs, the filmless departments, and the teleradiography, it has become essential to move one step forward. And again, because necessity is the mother of all inventions, a new weapon had to be added to the diagnostic arsenal against breast cancer, and this weapon is the full-field digital mammography. Uh, the first full field digital mammography unit was approved for sale by the Food and Drug Administration in the year 2000. Uh, I think it's difficult to believe that these two breasts belong to two uh, mammograms belong to the same lady just because she performed the mammogram above with the, on a conventional mammogram and the one below on a digital mammogram. Uh, yet, in spite of this, uh, the technical advances in mammography, it has always been accused of having major technical limitations. It was always accused of having a low sensitivity because the normal breast tissues may obscure an abnormality which is responsible for a large number of false negative results. It's also accused of having a low specificity because the superimposed breast tissues 
might give the impression of a, uh, of a false abnormality, which is responsible for a large number of false positive results. Uh, and we all know that the breast density changes from a breast uh, in ACRA, which is a fratty breast, to the ACRB, the scattered fibroglandular densities, the ACRC, which is a heterogeneous dense breast, and the ACRD, which is an extremely dense breast. And as we move from the ACRA to the ACRD, uh, the in there is an increased risk of breast cancer development, according to studies, and in the same time, there is a reduced contrast between lesions and surrounding normal breast parenchyma. Uh, the challenge with mammography interpre interpretation increases more e when we, whenever we have a younger individuals, whenever we have a dense or a heterogeneous parenchyma, whenever we have non-distorting and non-calcified carcinomas, and sometimes we are accused of this challenge uh, because we as radiologists might have a bad perception or misinterpretation to mammograms. Uh, I think if we all look at these mammograms, we can admit that lesions are easily detected and diagnosed in a fatty breast because we can all see the speculated outline mass lesions. and We can all be definite that this is a malignant breast lesion. In contradiction to what we have just seen, this is another mammogram with a heterogeneous dense breast parenchyma, and we cannot see what's behind this parenchyma unless we perform an ultrasound examination, and we can see that there are multicentric, multiple carcinomas within the left breast. Only going back to the mammogram, we can identify some subtle changes in the left breast, but we are only sure when we perform an ultrasound and not based on the mammogram. This is another example where we have a heterogeneous dense breast parenchyma, and unless we see the speculated outline mass lesion in the right breast, and we identify the location of this lesion uh, on the breast, can we go back to the mammogram and then we can see that there is an underlying speculated mass lesion in the right upper outer quadrant. Uh, this is another example. We have bilateral multiple obscure cured mass lesions within both breasts. On the ultrasound examination, there was underlying fibrocystic mammary changes, but in between these cysts, we had this irregular shape, hypoechoic mass lesion. And again, only when seeing this lesion and going back to the breast and identifying the location of this lesion, we can only see the lesion on the mammogram when we do so. There was an underlying speculated mass lesion in the right breast. Uh, these mammography limitations were actually the driving force behind efforts to upgrade existing mammography technologies and develop newer ones offering enhanced detection and diagnosis of breast cancer, modalities that are affordable, fast, and in the same time applicable. And going back to our slogan that necessity is the mother of all inventions, a new weapon had to be added to the diagnostic arsenal against breast cancer, and this time it is the 3D digital tomosynthesis. I'll have a stop here and ask you if anyone has a question or no. Does anybody have any question or I continue? Fi ma'ana Dr. Nivin. Elle le soal, sada zumala ou zamilat, elle le soal, il tfadal yamal an mute le nafsu, ou yisal. It means that mammography alone uh, is not enough. Uh, we should always um, add ultrasound uh, for the study. Uh, it's not screen. always. It's not always. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as I said, the challenge with mammography increases when we have a dense breast, when we have young individuals, when we have a heterogeneous breast. You see, it's so not, all, not in all cases. Yes. Uh, during a screening, uh, if I get dense breast or um, Young patient, I should add um, ultrasound in a screening. Uh, no, uh, we don't screen young individuals. Maybe in high risk. Uh, screen uh, young individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, in high risk, we start. Uh, it's okay. And in high risk, mm -hmm. it's indicated that you perform not only an ultrasound, but a, but an ultrasound and an MRI. But you should know who are the high risk individuals in the first place. The high-risk individuals are those individuals who have, have 
an incidence more than 25% more than the general population, and they are specified as those who have uh, BRCA G mutation, those who have had direct irradiation to the chest when they were young, uh, when they were in their childhood, uh, and those who have some uh, familial, uh, familial uh, syndromes, uh, for example, some of the familial polyposis, the same gene which causes the polyposis causes breast cancer. Uh, so it's not only indicated uh, ultrasound. And whenever you have a dense, heterogeneous, dense breast uh, on uh, screening for, an, for a normal individual, we sometimes have to recall the lady, and sometimes this lady must get a notice that she should do something more in her next uh, screen, that she should be screened with uh, mammography and ultrasound, or if we have tomosynthesis, and we're going to speak about this now, uh, it should be added to her screening protocol. Thanks a lot. Uh, any other questions? Uh, so we'll continue. Uh, the first uh, 3D digital tomosynthesis was approved for sale by the Food and Drug Administration in the year 2001. Uh, 3D digital tomosynthesis is expected to resolve many of the tissue overlap reading problems that are considered a major technical limitation of digital mammography. The technique of 3D digital tomosynthesis is simple. It's exactly like a mammogram where the breast is placed here in between the compression plate and the digital detector, but what's different from the mammogram is that the X-ray tube moves in an arc across the breast, taking a series of low-dose images that are acquired at different angles. The total dose of these small do low-dose images is equal to or slightly higher than the single-view uh, uh, mammogram. Uh, the end result is that we get a 3D reconstructed image of the breast that can be viewed every one millimeter. Uh, the clinical applications of tomosynthesis includes detection and screening because tomos using tomosynthesis, we can detect more cancers and in the same time, we can reduce the recall rates. It's also applicable in the diagnostic context because using tomosynthesis increases the diagnostic confidence, it, uh, or in other words, it helps us decide whether this lesion is benign or malignant. Uh, using tomosynthesis, we can reduce unnecessary biopsies we can identify the actual tumor size we, and we can identify multiple lesions within the breast. And though all this is more pronounced whenever we have a dense breast parenchyma. And now we'll have a look on the use of tomosynthesis in screening. Uh, as I've just said, the tomos, using tomosynthesis can help us detect uh, more cancer. This is an ACRC uh, breast, which is classified as an ACRC or it is uh, towards a dense breast. And we can see now this oblong shape uh, circumscribed mass lesion, which on complementary ultrasound examination turned out to be a small adenoma. The rest of the breast showed fibrocystic uh, memory changes. Uh, however, doing the tomosynthesis, we found something more serious than what we have just uh, said on the uh, normal mammogram. During the tomosynthesis, we identified a speculated outline mass lesion seen in the upper outer quadrant of the right breast. A biopsy was taken and revealed an underlying invasive lobular carcinoma. Uh, this is a less dense breast. It is classified as an ACRB. And could anybody of you help me uh, where the lesion is in this breast? It's not a dense breast. Would anybody want to answer? Okay, whenever I, I show this uh, mammogram, uh, some of the... It's some on of, uh, the left breast, outer, uh, inner uh, yes. aspect of the left breast. In many cases, they tell me that this is the lesion, okay? But the true lesion, it's not this one. It is here, a speculated outline mass lesion, and it is seen more evident on the tomosynthesis image. We had an underlying speculated carcinoma. This is an even less dense uh, breast, uh, it was classified as an ACRA, and it was assigned a BIRETS2 based on the fact that she has an intramammary lymph node in the right breast. Actually, on the tomosynthesis, it was not an intramammary lymph node, and when we see the tomosynthesis and we see the speculated outline, then this is a small carcinoma, a biopsy was taken, and it revealed an underlying invasive duct carcinoma. 
Uh, as we've just said, the tomosynthesis also decreases, the, helps us to decrease the record rate. Uh, this was a screening a mammogram of a 55-year-old patient. She was going to be recalled because of this speculated outline mass lesion in the upper outer quadrant of the right breast. Uh, actually, on the tomosynthesis, this was not an actual lesion. It was just overlapping breast parenchyma, which gave a false impression that there was a, a mass lesion within the right breast, and this patient was not recalled. Uh, and now we'll have a look on the use of tomosynthesis in the diagnostic context. Uh, as we've said, the tomosynthesis increases our diagnostic confidence. This is a 52-year-old patient with a palpable uh, right left retroareolar mass lesion. On her mammogram, we can hardly see a, a focal asymmetry in the left retroareolar lesion. We are not definite that the, whether this is a lesion or no. But looking on the tomosynthesis, uh, tomosynthesis images, we are definite that there is a speculated mass lesion in the left uh, retroareolar region. And this was her uh, complementary ultrasound examination, which revealed an irregular hypoechoic mass lesion with posterior uh, shell. Uh, this is another lesion, uh, this is another case. Uh, she had a uh, rounded, uh, circumscribed, moderately dense lesion in her right breast. Uh, she kept it could have been assigned a BIRATS-3, but when looking on the tomosynthesis again, we can see that this lesion is not as good as it appeared on the mammogram. It had speculations and the outline was obscured in part of the lesion. Uh, and uh, a biopsy was taken again and it revealed an invasive duct carcinoma grade 2. Uh, this is another case. She had a well, she's a well-known case with focal right upper outer quadrant fibrocystic mammary changes. Looking on the tomosynthesis, we thought that these uh, are the focal fibrocystic mammary changes, but looking on the tomosynthesis, this lesion, which was just adjacent to the, adjacent to the big lesion, it, it had an irregular appearance with a speculated outline. We performed an ultrasound examination. This was the cluster of cysts, and this was an irregular, there was an adjacent irregular speculated mass lesion, this was the elastography of the same lesion, and having this blue color on elastography means that we are dealing with a malignant uh, mass. Uh, uh, this is another case. There, uh, there was a bilateral upper outer quadrant nodular lesions, which were thought to be uh, intramammary lymph nodes. Again, looking on the tomosynthesis lesion, the lesion on the right was an actual intramammary lymph node with a central fatty hilum, while the lesion on the left was irregular in shape with a microlobulated outline, a biopsy was taken from this lesion and revealed a small, a tiny invasive duct carcinoma. Uh, as we've just said, the tomosynthesis uh, helps us identify the actual tumor size. Uh, if we all look at this mammogram, it's, it's very clear that this is a malignant lesion with a speculated outline. And you might think, why should we perform a tomosynthesis in such a case? But just compare what we see on the normal mammogram with what we see on the tomosynthesis. And when we have a closer look, look at the extension of the lesion on the tomosynthesis and its extension on the mammography. And I think identifying the tumor size is actual tumor extension counts in the patient uh, management. This is another example. This is, an, again, an evident lesion with a speculated outline. It is, it is an evident carcinoma on the mammogram, and this is how it appeared on the tomosynthesis and how it appeared on the contrast mammography. Just compare the size on the tomosynthesis, the size on the, on the normal mammogram, and the size of the lesion on the contrast mammography. Definitely, the lesion extension was more evident uh, on the tomosynthesis than it was on the mammogram or the contrast uh, mammography. Uh, this is another case. Uh, we had a sus we, we had saw nothing on her mammogram except that she had this posterior uh, tenting of the breast parenchyma, which sometimes indicates that there is an underlying lesion. But actually, on the mammogram, we saw no definite lesion. While looking on the tomosynthesis image and having a closer look, there was a speculated outline mass lesion, and it was not only one mass, it was an, there was another mass in the inner breast quadrant, and this was a multicentric carcinoma of the right, left breast. Uh, and now the question comes, has 3D digital tomosynthesis solved all the problems of breast imaging? 
We all know that the best results in imaging are usually obtained from imaging modalities which can combine both morph morphology assessment together with functional information. And yes, tomosynthesis uh, provides us with an enhanced morphology assessment, but it has no role to play in function in giving us any functional information about breast tissues. And so we go back to our slogan again that necessity is the mother of all inventions and a new weapon had to be added to the diagnostic arsenal. And this time, this weapon is the contrast mammography. I'll have a stop here and ask you if anybody needs, uh, wants uh, to ask any question. Uh, Dr. Rasha? Yes? Uh, is uh, this meaning that tomosense is essential? In La, your voice is not clear at all. Can you please lo hire your voice? Mm. In just a minute. Uh, is that good now? Yes. Um. بس حضرتك كده معناه ان احنا التومو سنسز ده اساسي في كل حاله الحالات اللي حضرتك حضرتيها ان في حاله ما كانش فيها شك اصلا سواء اذا كانت اذا كانت دي كانسر او دي ما فيهاش كانسر والتومو سنسز كان العكس خالص. Your question is a very good question على فكره. ممكن يحل في يوم الايام محل الميمو؟ Your question is a very good question. Uh, uh, it has two parts. Can it replace can tomosynthesis replace mammography? Or and the first part of your question is, uh, should we perform tomosynthesis for all cases or no? Okay. If you have tomosynthesis yes. Yes. Uh, on your mammography machine, then every uh, individual performing a mammogram should uh, perform at least a single view with a tomosynthesis. And why this? Because tomosynthesis actually helps us mainly in identifying lesions that we do not know that they are present or they, that they are already present. So just perform a single view with tomosynthesis mm -hmm. just to exclude that there are no underlying uh, lesions, okay? Uh, the, your, the second part of your question mm -hmm. is okay. whether tomosynthesis will replace mammography or no. Actually, when you do the tomosynthesis in the new machines, uh, you, you get a reconstructed image, uh, uh, which is exactly, we call it a synthetic image, which is exactly uh, like a, a 2D mammography image. And that means if you perform tomosynthesis, you can get the tomosynthesis images, which are viewed every one millimeter in slices, and you can get in the same time a 2D image, which is exactly like the mammogram. So if you perform tomosynthesis, you do not have to perform a mammogram because we get the same uh, uh, result. <laughs> of okay? Is that no, no, I don't know. Yes, please. Uh, means, uh, I can't. Hello. Can I finish my question, please? Yes. Uh, Hello. Can I? Hello. Can I do it from the start? Uh, uh, do tomosynthesis? I don't understand. I don't hear the rest of your question. يعني أنا لو عندي توم سنسس في الماشين بتاعتي ممكن أعمل توم سنسس من الأول وبعدش الماموغرافي أصلاً. أيوة أيوة ما هو أنت you get a two D image from the توم سنسس image. You actually get the mammography and the توم سنسس from just doing a توم سنسس. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions or I continue? The first contrast mammography was approved for sale by the Food and Drug Administration in the year 2011. In contrast mammography, it is simply a mammogram after injecting a contrast in the anticubital vein. We use the normal low or smaller contrast media that we use in CT. We inject them in the anticubital vein, wait for two or three minutes, and then we perform a, a, ma a normal mammogram in the, two, in the two views, the two conventional views, the CC and the mediolateral oblique view. What's different from the normal mammogram is that in each mammography view, we get a pair of images. One is called the low energy image, which is exactly like the mammogram. It looks exactly like the normal mammogram. We do not know when we look at the low energy image that we have contrast in the image. 
and we get a high energy image which is highly sensitive uh, to the presence of iodine. Then we subtract both images from each other and we get the subtracted or they call it the recombined image in which the parenchyma is totally cancelled and what we see only on the mammogram is the lesion which shows contrast uptake. But we always have to remember that in addition to this subtracted or recombined image, we still have the low energy image which looks exactly like the mammogram and this is a valuable image uh, in which we can see uh, micro calcifications. Uh, I'll show you one case in which we performed tomosynthesis and still we needed to perform <laughs> contrast uh, mammography. Can you please mute your phone? Your, uh, I'll put you on mute all. Okay, uh, uh, this was a 38 year old uh, female, 35 year old female with a palpable left breast uh, mass lesion. Corresponding to the left uh, breast mass lesion, uh, she had uh, this lesion in her in the on the mammogram, which was a speculated outline mass lesion, which even became more evident on the tomosynthesis image. Uh, unfortunately, during performing an ultrasound examination, we found a tiny uh, lesion in the contralateral breast in the right retroareolar region. We went back to her mammogram and uh, to the tomosynthesis, and we were not sure whether there was a lesion uh, or whether this linear opacity corresponding to, uh, corresponded to this lesion or no. According to the Breast Cancer Tumor Board, she was assigned for a contrast uh, mammogram. Uh, when she performed the contrast mammogram, actually the lesion on the left was not a single lesion, it, we saw multiple lesions, and the lesion on the right appeared uh, enhancing in the right, contra, in the right retroareolar air lesion. A biopsy was taken and revealed bilateral invasive duct carcinoma. Uh, we performed uh, several studies in Asri Laini, in Bahia Hospital, and in the National Cancer Institutes about uh, contrast mammography and its clinical use. And the clinically proven results of these, uh, of these uh, studies have shown that contrast enhanced mammography increases mammography sensitivity and specificity. In other words, we can say that more patients will be sent home avoiding further workup, or in other words, we can help reduce patient anxiety. And in the same time, less cancers will be missed or in we will have an enhanced diagnostic performance. Uh, uh, to achieve proper patient man management, whenever we encounter a case with a suspected breast cancer, we are always asked to pass through three steps. The first step is we have to look for cancer or to, to detect and diagnose cancer, then we have to stage this cancer or know how far this cancer has spread. And lastly, we have to follow up this cancer. Uh, and when this cancer has been treated, we have to follow up the patient or, or determine if what if the treatment that we have given to the patient has worked or not. And we'll start by having a first look on the, on the, on the detection and the diagnosis of cancer using contrast mammography. Uh, in the study, uh, in a study assessing the impact of using the MRI morphology descriptors in the characterization of 350 breast lesions, we found that most malignant tumors show contrast uptake, and most benign tumors do not show uh, uh, contrast uptake. But there is still an overlap between enhancing benign and malignant lesions. But we can simply say that whenever we have a breast lesion which is non-enhancing, 99% uh, this lesion will be uh, a benign lesions with very few exceptions, and this is the low-grade uh, ductal carcinoma in situ. Uh, I'll show you one example which proves what, I, what I've uh, been just saying. This was a 50-year-old uh, female. She had bilateral nodular texture of uh, her breast parenchyma. And looking at her breast, she had bilateral multiple nodular lesions in both uh, breasts. Uh, we performed a contrast mammogram and all the lesions on the right side did not show any contrast uptake and actually they were uh, small fibroadenomas and all the lesions on the left side showed contrast uptake and this was a multicentric invasive duct carcinoma. Uh, this is another case, she's a 27-year-old lactating female. She had a rapidly growing left breast, uh, left breast mass lesion. 
Uh, this was her ultrasound. Uh, she had a circumscribed, highly vascular mass lesion with slit-like spaces, and she was misinterpreted as is below this tumor. We performed a contrast mammogram. This was the low energy images, which, uh, which uh, like I told you, they look exactly like a mammogram, and we could not identify the lesion. Well, and on the high, on the subtracted or the recombined images, the lesion did not show any contrast uptake, which indicated that this lesion is most probably a benign lesion. A biopsy was taken, and it was simply a lactating adenoma. And up till now, we have no morphology descriptors specific for contrast mammography. So we follow, in, the, in characterizing lesions on contrast mammography, we follow what we do on MRI. The same descriptors used for MRI are used uh, for contrast mammography. And so whenever we see a lesion that is enhancing on contrast mammography, this lesion is classified into an enhancing focus, which is less than 5 millimeter, and it is non-space occupying. It is it, uh, uh, into mass lesions, which is a three-dimensional lesion, and it is space-occupying, or non-mass lesions, which is an area, and it is a non-space-occupying. Uh, and to characterize whether this enhancing lesion is benign or malignant, we should describe the shape of the lesion, which is either rounded, oval, or irregular. We should describe the margin of the lesion, which is either circumscribed, irregular, or speculated, and we should describe the internal enhancement of lesions, which is either homogeneous, dark septations, heterogeneous, or rim enhancing. Going to the left side, we are mainly speaking of benign lesions, and going to the right side, we are mainly speaking of malignant lesions. Or in other words, if I say that I have a rounded lesion, which uh, shows uh, circumscribed margins and homogeneous uh, enhancement, or it shows dark internal septations, then this lesion is most probably a benign uh, lesion. While on the other hand, if, we, if I describe a lesion and I say that it has an irregular, appear, uh, an irregular shape uh, with uh, speculated margins, and it shows either heterogeneous or rim enhancement, then most probably this lesion is malignant. And when we have enhancing non-mass lesions, we should, uh, to characterize them, we should describe the distribution, which is either focal, uh, linear, segmental, taking a distribution of the duct, uh, regional, taking more than one segment, uh, uh, more, more than one quadrant, multiple regions, or diffuse enhancement. And we should describe the internal enhancement characteristics of the non-mass lesion, which uh, may be either homogeneous, heterogeneous, clumped, or clustered in. And we found, uh, according to several studies, that the linear, the segmental, and the regional distribution, and the heterogeneous and the clumped pattern were the most significant of malignant lesions. Uh, contrast mammography actually has the potential to be used in screening high-risk individuals like this one. And usually, high-risk individuals have this type of heterogeneous dense breast uh, with, with uh, multiple areas of uh, concerns. But where the true area of concern is, is only seen on the contrast mammography. See how all this heterogeneous dense parenchyma is cancelled on the contrast mammogram, and we can only see these two tiny enhancing uh, nodules in the left breast, and actually this was a multifocal carcinoma of the left breast. And now we've diagnosed the carcinoma, and we are the next stage is that we have to stage this carcinoma, or in other words, know how far uh, this carcinoma has spread. And to stage any carcinoma, we should identify the size of the lesion, the multiplicity of the lesion, the lymph node status, and the distant metastasis. And actually, in contrast mammography, what we can only do is identify the size and multiplicity of lesions. Uh, this is a 38-year-old female with a palpable right breast mass lesion. Uh, corresponding to, her, the, to the clinically palpable lesion, we had this uh, small lesion, and she was said to be a good candidate for a conservative surgery. When she was uh, addressed in the cancer tumor board, the breast cancer tumor board, again, the surgeon said we cannot perform a conservative surgery in such a heterogeneous dense breast uh, and we, uh, although we see this lesion, we are not sure that there are no more in both breasts. We did a contrast mammography. Her left breast was totally free, while her right breast showed a much wider extension of the lesion, 
and according to contrast mammography, the management of this patient was changed from a conservative to um, a sur a surgery to an MRN. Uh, this is another case. She's a 47-year-old female with a palpable left breast, uh, breast mass lesion. Again, she was a good candidate for conservative surgery, but on her contrast mammography, unfortunately, it was not a single lesion, although the pa this patient did not have this dense breast that the last patient had, but yet the contrast mammography showed additional lesions that were not seen on the normal mammogram. And again, the management here changed from a conservative to an MRM. I'll have a stop here and ask you, does anybody need any, want to ask any question? Assalamualaikum. Hello. 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 Yeah. Ma'am, I want to ask what is BRCA1 and BRCA2 mammography? Uh, can you hear your voice, please? I want to ask what is BRCA1 and BRCA2 mammography? The BIRATS or the ACR? The, there are two classifications for the uh, You're talking about two classifications. The ACR? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I'm not asking about classification. I'm asking about BRCA, BRCA gene mammography. Ah, BRCA the BRCA gene? gene? Yeah. Yes. Ah, ah, okay. Yes, yes, I understand. Ah, the, this is, uh, these are, some patients have uh, some genetic mutation which makes them more prone to develop uh, some types of carcinomas. And from these are the breast carcinoma with the BRCA gene 1 and 2. Uh, but we have also other uh, genetic mutations which predispose to breast cancer, like I just told you, those who have familial polyposis. Uh, but I can't remember the name of the gene, but there are other genes which predispose patients to get to develop breast cancer. Is that clear? or? No, ma'am. I want to ask, like, what do we do in those? Like, how do we do it? Uh, how, we, how we manage with how we manage these patients? No. How, how do we do the procedure? How do we do the procedure of mammography to detect that BRCA gene one and BRCA two? No, it's, they are not detected by mammography. They are detected by uh, genetic or uh, chromosomal studies. Genetic studies. They are not detected by mammography. We just suspect them on mammography when the patient comes and she tells you that the, her mother, her sisters, her aunts have uh, have have had breast cancer, and then you see this type of heterogeneous dense breast parenchyma. We sometimes advise the patient and tell her you have to do uh, to test for your genes because uh, most probably you have a familial uh, tendency uh, to develop breast cancer. So, uh, like, uh, is uh, contrast enhanced spectral mammography better than uh, the simple mammography in these patients? Uh, yes, it is, but it, uh, we have uh, limited studies up till now uh, to uh, a, a recent publication in 2019 uh, said that the contrast mammography is useful uh, in uh, patients with the familial tendon or, or with increased tendency to develop breast cancer. But we have uh, not uh, any, a good amount of studies uh, to prove this, because especially that they say that these patients uh, have a more sensitive parenchyma to the increased irradiation. So we have to do a prolonged uh, uh, studies uh, to, to know whether doing a contrast mammography will increase the risk or no. You see the difference? And that's why what is documented and validated that these patients should be screened by mammography and uh, MRI. Some do it annual, starting the age of 35, not the age of 40. And some do it every six months once you do a mammogram and once you do an MRI. But I think in the near future, uh, the contrast mammography will prove itself as a good screening tool in these individuals because most of them, they do their mammograms and they do not do the MRI because it's more expensive and it's more difficult to get a date to perform an MRI. While doing contrast mammography, you are obtaining the benefits of both MRI and mammography together. But as I just told you, we have to perform prolonged studies uh, as to determine whether using contrast mammography will have an effect uh, on increasing uh, the incidence uh, the the the, the development of breast cancer or no. 
Uh, we had. Uh, uh, excuse uh, me, doctor. Hello. Hello. Uh, doctor, what about dense breast? Uh, is the contrast enhanced mammogram better or the MRI? Uh, uh, in contrast mammography, actually, it, uh, the advantage over MRI uh, is that it is easier, cheaper, and um, uh, if you have it, it's very easy to, to put it in your routine, to add it as an add-on exam in your routine work. And in the same time, uh, the parenchyma uh, does not enhance uh, much on, uh, on the contrast mammogram like it does on the MRI whenever you have a dense breast. So sometimes, in most cases, whenever we have a contrast mammography available, uh, for me, I prefer to perform a contrast mammography in the dense breast more uh, than I do uh, for the uh, uh, do an MRI. Uh, but there are special situations. I have a, a specific lecture uh, to identify wh when should we perform MRI and when should we perform a contrast mammogram. Uh, in uh, but it is a very long lecture. I cannot give it. Uh, I cannot even simplify it here. But I'll tell you that uh, usually we take the decision in the tumor board according uh, to each uh, situation. Yeah, and I'll give you a few examples. For example, we have lesions that are difficult to be detected uh, on a mammogram, like the deeply seated lesions, the axillary tail lesions, lesions in the inframammary fold, in the upper inner quadrant. So these lesions sometimes are missed on the mammogram. So I can never ask. Uh, uh, if, I, if the patient, for example, comes complaining of a mass in the upper inner quadrant, in the infra mammary fold, I never uh, recommend contrast mammography in these cases because they are easily missed, already easily missed on the mammogram. So I, I might perform the contrast mammography and see nothing. Uh, there are uh, multiple situations where MRI is still very much superior than contrast uh, mammography, but this is actually a very long, uh, uh, and I, I need to speak for maybe half an hour to explain this. Um, any other questions? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. One question uh, about the contrast enhanced mammography, ma'am. Uh, what exactly procedure you're following in your clinic, ma'am? How much you like uh, the dose and uh, the timings? Like. Uh, the dose and the time, uh, it's 1.5 uh, cc per kilogram. We usually give, uh, yani we say the average person is 70 kilograms. Uh, he usually receives about 100 cc of contrast. We inject the contrast, we wait for two minutes, uh, and uh, or two to three minutes, and then we start doing the cc of the normal side, the cc of the disease side, the medulateral of the disease side, and then the medulateral of the normal side. معانا دكتور احمد منير وي هاف دكتور احمد منير هاف ا كويستشن هاز ا كويستشن اتفضل دكتور رشا اي هاف ا كويستشن اف ذير واتس ذا ديفرنس بين مايكرو كالسيفيكيشن ان ماموجرافي اند ذا توموسنسس ريجاردينج ذا مورفولوجي اف ذير اني ديفرنس بين بوث تكنيكس يعني وان توموسنسس وان وان وي ستارتد براكتسينج ذا توموسنسس uh, it was accused that uh, because we see uh, the, uh, the slices every one millimeter, millimeter uh, it was accused that we can miss uh, microcalcific clusters because of this. And they said that the normal mammogram is much, much better than the tomosynthesis for identifying uh, microcalcification. And also the technique of performing tomosynthesis sometimes uh, caused uh, with, micro -cal with the calcifications in general, it caused it like something they called it a tail artifact. And this artifact uh, can blur the image so that you do not see the tomosynthesis uh, clear. But now uh, the new machines, in the new machines and in, in special, uh, uh, they, uh, in special any yani, types of machines, uh, they added that you can see the tomosynthesis images in two ways. You can see it uh, in a very thin slices uh, of one millimeter thickness, uh, or you can see it in slabs uh, of one centimeter thickness. And when you see it in a one centimeter thickness, you know more, get the problems that the uh, tomosynthesis was accused of. Because you can see a microcalcific cluster very evident. I have very good cases where, where we can, uh, cannot identify microcalcifications on mammography because of a dense breast. And then doing the tomosynthesis, they are very evident. Using the slabs, we can identify the cluster. And using special techniques in the tomosynthesis, we no more see 
uh, this tail artifacts which follows uh, the calcification and blurs uh, the image. Yeah, I have another another part of the question. Is there uh, any idea about uh, if there will be uh, contrast uh, enhanced tomosensors? Uh, there is, uh, actually some vendors have uh, are actually have machines with uh, a contrast mammography combined with tomosynthesis, but uh, but I think they are not still uh, uh, FDA approved and not in sale. Yani. But there is, uh, yani I have attended uh, several lectures uh, for some vendors that uh, they use contrast mammography and then they image it with uh, tomosynthesis. Any other question? So we continue. Uh, so now we've diagnosed the cancer uh, using contrast mammography. We have staged uh, this cancer using contrast mammography. We have treated the patient and we are asked to follow up uh, or determine if treatment uh, works. Uh, the first use of contrast mammography in the follow-up is to confirm or exclude operative bed recurrence. And this is one good example. She's a 40-year-old female with right conservative uh, surgery. Uh, she had this uh, area with a parenchymal distortion corresponding to the uh, operative bed uh, scar. Based on her mammogram, we can never be sure whether this scar is a normal scar or whether there is operative bed uh, recurrence. But when we look at the contrast mammography, just by a simple look, and we found that the whole length of the scar shows enhancing uh, lesions, then this is definitely operative bed uh, recurrence. Uh, this is another case. Uh, she had a right conservative surgery, and again, we have a, a distorting scar in the right breast, and this scar is associated maybe with uh, fat uh, needles. Again, based on the mammogram, we can never say whether there is recurrence or no, but looking on the contrast mammography, there was no enhancement at the site of the operative bed, and this was simply operative bed scar with the fat necrosis, but unfortunately, there was a coincidental carcinoma in the other breast. If you go back to her mammogram, the carcinoma was here, but it was not evident before uh, we did the contrast uh, mammography. This is another case. She performed a skin sparing operation and the tram flap reconstruction. Uh, the operative scar was distorted with microcalcifications. There was a, a, an asymmetry at the site of the scar uh, on the contrast mammography. As we see here, these are the microcalcifications, but there was no enhancement associating these calcifications. And as we said at the beginning of when we talked about the contrast mammography, then uh, that if we find no enhancement, this means either there is nothing or there is an underlying benign lesion. And actually, this was simply a case of operative bed uh, fat uh, necrosis. Uh, contrast mammography is also used in the follow-up of patients receiving new adjuvant chemotherapy. lesion and so we can definitely say that there is complete radiological response of the retroalular mass uh, and again we go back to the question has contrast mammography solved all the problems of breast imaging because it combines it gives us an enhanced morphology assessment and in the same time it gives us some functional information about the neovascularity which associates uh, malignant breast lesions uh, definitely using contrast mammography has helped, but still we have an overlap between benign and malignant ma mass lesions, and contrast mammography does not give us any information about the metabolism of the tumor cells. And again, because necessity is the mother of all inventions, a new weapon had to be added to the diagnostic arsenal against breast cancer, and this time the weapon is the PET mammography. The positron emission mammography was approved also for sale by the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, PET mammography, or PEM, it is known as PEM, is a specialized application of PET 
used to visualize breast tissue changes. PEM is based on the same principles as PET as it analyzes increased glucose metabolism in the cancer cells via an injected radio tracer. And to, to simplify how PEM <coughs> works, I will just make a, a comparison between the contrast mammography and uh, the PEM. Uh, in contrast, which is obtained in the CC, the mediolateral, and the axillary view. Uh, we have a new fixed uh, uh, PET mammography machine in Bahia Breast Cancer Hospital, but actually we'll start working with it uh, next week, so I don't have cases to show. This is not my case. This is a case from the internet. It's just to so show you how PEM uh, show, gives us uh, 12 images of, a to of a tomographic images, and it can, we can easily identify even small lesions, as small as one one uh, millimeter or two millimeters, uh, and this is a case of a multicentric carcinoma of uh, the right breast. And lastly, to end my lecture, definitely in the last decade, we have witnessed the emergence of a new era in breast imaging with the development of new technologies and the upgraded applications of already existing ones. Yet a question still remains, with this rapid pace of new developments, has the field of breast imaging exhausted its depth? Or should we still await even higher technical evolutions? And thank you. Any other questions? Maana, Dr. Rabdallah. Hello, Doctor. How are you? Yes. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, enhanced mammogram about the patient selection for uh, this procedure. Uh, I yes. saw some of, some of the lesions uh, are being speculated in conventional mammogram, but when we use a uh, 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 contrast-enhanced mammogram, it reveals uh, no enhancement. And this is reassuring about their benign nature or being as, just a scar tissue. So what is the sens sensitivity and specificity of uh, contrast-enhanced mammogram compared to conventional mammogram? And is it reassuring if we did uh, uh, contrast-enhanced mammogram and it was negative or there is no enhancement, even in the con if the conventional mammogram uh, is highly suspicious? Should we proceed for biopsy or an MRI, or it is a quite reassuring that we, we, we can ignore this uh, uh, we can uh, take the enhanced uh, mammogram uh, confidently as uh, if it is negative for enhancement. Uh, uh, the, as regards the sensitivity and specificity of contrast mammography, it's much, much higher uh, than uh, the, the mammogram. It, uh, yani it approaches the MRI uh, and it is much higher than the normal mammogram. The specificity, especially of the mammography, is very low. Uh, in, in some, uh, even in some studies, it reaches 30% and 40%. But it's of a very low. The mammography is a very low specificity, and the MRI also is of a low specificity. But actually, the low specificity of MRI is of benefit because the low specificity. What makes uh, MRI uh, of low specificity is that it uh, it sees many of the benign precancerous lesions, which should be surgically removed. So it's a low specificity. It gives us a large number of false positive results. But these false positive results are of benefit to the patient. Okay, uh, the contrast mammography increases uh, the the specificity and sensitivity of uh, mammography, but nothing nothing is without disadvantages or without any limitations. Uh, in some cases, we I perform the contrast mammography and then I tell them, no, I'm not sure. I have to perform an MRI. But these are very uh, An example, in Bahia Hospital, for example, we perform uh, what approaches maybe 60 to 70 uh, cases per week of contrast mammography, and sometimes even more than this, okay? Uh, out of these 60 or 70, uh, yani, uh, every two to three weeks, every two to three months, will I say that this contrast mammography is not enough? I need to perform an MRI in addition to the contrast mammography. You see the difference? Uh, yani it, it is not without limitation. 
and uh, يعني one major advantage of contrast mammography is that it is uh, very palatable to the surgeons. If you give the surgeon an MRI, he will tell you, uh, tell me what's in this MRI. But in contrast mammography, he can have the film with him in the operative room. He can see the film and he can understand what he sees in the film. Uh, so it has some advantages over MRI, but still uh, never say that, yani, never say that contrast mammography is better than MRI because Thanks, Dr. Abdullah. Um, next, what had you kiss me, Dr. Rasha? Dr. Tuhemi, I have been un unmuted you. Dr. Rasha, uh, yes. thank you for your uh, cases. They are, uh, but I, I have a question. One of the cases that you showed in sound was that the mass was uh, highly vascular with high Doppler flow inside. However, yes. in the contrast enhanced, the, it did not enhance and it became as a benign lesion. Yes, yes. Um, uh, you want an explanation to this? Yeah, please. Uh, because, you know, what we know if the lesion is highly vascular, it uh, mostly it, it, is, it is malignant and it should be very up. Yes, uh, I'll tell yeah. you something that uh, it's not only about uh, the lesion being vascular. It's about the new vascularity, which has a deficient uh, basement membrane, and they allow leakage of the contrast. You, you can get, have a, a benign lesion, which shows vascularity, uh, but it, okay. this vascularity uh, is, is, is healthy vessels. They do not leak the contrast in the surrounding parenchyma. You see the difference? Uh, the the vascular okay. the increased vascularity yeah, yeah. in pregnant lesions they are new vascular uh, new vessel new vas uh, new vessels which have uh, a deficient basement membrane and they leak uh, the contrast. But you, you, yeah, okay. yeah, this is a good point because we have fibroadenomas which enhance uh, and you can uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what is the yeah, yeah, what is the technique how they yeah, yeah, how they enhance although they have healthy vessels also. Oh, okay. Thanks, thanks, Doctor Tuhem. Um, now the tenbih ala بعد إذن الدكتورة رشا. Now the tenbih ala السادة الزملاء والزميلات الأعزاء بالضغط على رابط الفيدباك لمراجعة وملء استمارة الفيدباك لأن السادة المحاضرين وإحنا بنحتاجها في تطوير مستوانا تلاف العيوب ومحاولة تعظيم المميزات. فرجاء رجاء من استمارة الفيدباك لأن إحنا بنحتاج هذا ضروري جزيل الشكر next question دكتورة مجدة مجدي محمد دكتور محمد فن... I have a question بس this lecture is recorded مش كده أيوة فن... آه طيب آه. عشان I need the record بعد after that يعني after your permission دكتورة رشا طبعا آه آه طبعا. I need طبعاً. I need just the record يعني keep it يعني with the... طبعا 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 يا دكتورة رشا طبعا يا فن دكتورة مجدة مجدي تفضلي يا فندم دكتورة شو؟ yes بعد إذا هاي كدكتور كنت عايز أسأل في في ميل بيشنت 50 years old with بيرد 5 breast lesion على background on ECRC breast density should I proceed to such cases an MRI to exclude multicentricity before this patient proceed to the operation يعني بصي usually uh, I wait in the to the uh, to the decision of the breast cancer tumor board. If the surgeon tells me uh, that uh, he uh, that this patient he has uh, it is feasible for conservative surgery, and I cannot see it's not uh, it's not just being an ACRC on an AC, ACRD breast. There are an ACRC and ACRD breast where you can see, feel that the the parenchyma is homogeneous, and even in these breasts you can identify that this is a single lesion. But it is about the heterogeneity of the breast parenchyma. If you have a heterogeneous dense parenchyma and you have a single lesion and the surgeon says that uh, he wants to perform a conservative surgery, then usually in these cases we proceed uh, to a contrast study just to exclude that there are no other uh, lesions in the breast. But if, you have, if you're definite that this is a single lesion or if the surgeon says, no, uh, she's a candidate for mastectomy, uh, then uh, we do not do anything more. There is no use of performing uh, any other contrast study. Uh, 
نيكست كانديديت دكتوره ريهام حسن حسن اتفضلي دكتوره ريهام السلام عليكم دكتوره رشا ابو عليكم السلام من فضل حضرتك كان في بيبر نازله جديده في 2019 عن الاوتوميتد بريست الترا ساوند اه فهل الجهاز ده موجود اصلا في مصر واحنا بنشتغل آه عليه اه ده اوتوميتد الترا ساوند از بريزنت ان ذا ناشونال سكريننج بروجرام اند ات از بريزنت ان ذا ناشونال كانسر انستيتيوت اند وفي اللي هي اللي هي الشيخ زايد مستشفى الشيخ زايد اللي في مدينه نصر وفي واحده كمان بس انا ناسيه فين يعني في عندنا اربع اجهزه في مصر اوتوميتد بريست الترا ساوند واحنا مصريين كتير عاملين عليه ستاديز كتير يعني تمام تمام شكرا لحضرتك يا دكتور لا امم نيكست كويستشن دكتوره شيماء احمد علي اتفضلي يا دكتوره شيماء ان ميوت يور سيلف السلام عليكم دكتوره رشا وعليكم السلام دلوقتي احنا في السكريننج بروجرام اللي احنا ماشيين فيه دلوقتي في مصر ازاي اخد القرار ان انا ابجريد بتاع الحاله ان انا اوديها لتومو او اكتفي ان انا فعلا مش شايفه حاجه على الـ على الـ على المامو اللي انا شايفاها مع الالترا ساوند لو انا محتاجه يعني في جايد لاينز امتى اعمل ابجريدنج للنكست ستيب ما هي انت في ال بس احنا السكريننج اللي احنا ماشيين عليه دلوقتي مش تبع الجايد لاينز قوي يعني هو هو يعني زي ما تقولي حاجه يعني فكره الحاله اللي حضرتك عملتيها وبالتوم ابتدى يبان فيها حاجه ثانيه مختلفه او الحاله اللي احنا اديناها الدينوفو عملنا الكونتراست اقصد ان القرار بيتغير لما اخد خطوه اكتر يعني الحاله اللي احنا آه. كنا هندخلها كونسرفتيف سيرجري وعملنا لها الكونتراست فاخدنا غيرنا القرار اه لا بس دول ده انا عايزه يعني عايزه بوينت كده اخد عليها القرار امتى اشفت الحاجه اعلى طب احنا لازم نفرق احنا بنعمل سكريننج وي ار بيرفورمينج سكريننج اور دايجنوزس والسكرين انت بتسالني على السكرين وضع السكريننج دلوقتي في مصر ولا ولا السكريننج اللي هو الدوكيومنتد وورلد وايد لا الدوكيومنتد Uh, the documented worldwide, if you have tomosynthesis, you should uh, include it in at least one view in your screening mammogram. خلاص? When you have a, 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 a symptomatic patient, the condition is totally different. According to the symptom of the patient, we have sp uh, specific guidelines for each symptom. يعني if you have, مثلا, nipple discharge, the, the, the work up of the nipple discharge is different from what when, it, when you have a palpable mass lesion. If you have an inflammatory breast lesion, it's different from if you have, مثلا كده. فكل فالكل symptomatic patient has his, يعني his her her diagnostic workup. Like if you are speaking of screening in general, if you have tomosynthesis, then include at least one view of tomosynthesis in your screening mammogram. Doctor Mohammed. حضرتك يا دكتوره رشا يعني يعني لما حضرتك تقرري زي ما هم عايزين يسالوا لا ما فيش مشكله خالص طيب طيب يعني وقت ما حضرتك تقرري تنهي ما فيش اي مشكله الساده الزملاء خمسه ريزنج ذير هاندز بنشوف هم مين ويعني اوكي لاست فايف لاست فايف طيب معانا دكتور محمد كمال محمد سعد اتفضل يا دكتور محمد السلام عليكم السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام شكرا دكتور رشا على المحاضره بتاعت حضرتك بس كان ليا سؤال بالنسبه للكونتراست ماموجرافي هل في آه. بروتوكول معين بروتوكول معين بنستخدمه يعني كونتراست الدوز هاو تو انجكت مانوالي ولا بانجكتور ناخد قد ايه وقت ما بين الانجكشن والتصوير كل ده في بروتوكول معين يعني عشان اه اه طبعا بروتوكول وستاندردايز يعني هو مع حد سالني عليها ولسه كنت مجاوبه عليها قبل كده وي يعني احنا وي وي انجكت كونتراست ان ذا انتي كيوبيتال فين طبعا بريفيرابلي يوزنج انجكتور خلاص بس ان موست بليسز وي دو ات مانيوال وي هاف يعني هيومن انجكتورز ان نيرسز بتوعنا بس هو طبعا بريفيرابلي ان هو يبقى يوزنج ان انجكتور خلاص وبنويت 2 minutes وبعدين بناخد السي سي والميديو لاترال اوبليك 
بنبتدي بالنورمال بريست ديزيز بريست ديزيز بريست دي نورمال بريست يعني بنلف لفه حوالين العيانه خلاص وبناخد فوق وفي كل وضع من دول بيبقى فيه اللو الهاي انرجي ايمج ده انت الجهاز هو اللي بيبدا بيعملهم يعني نيكست uh, كويستشن uh, دكتوره مروه شحاته دكتوره مروه شحاته انميوت يور سيلف دكتوره مروه السلام عليكم دكتوره رشا وعليكم السلام يا دكتوره مروه uh, انا بس كنت عايزه اسال ايه الادفانتج بتاع البيم اوفر الكونترس انهانسد ماموجرافي بصي هو يعني هو لغايه دلوقتي احنا لسه انا يعني ما عنديش قوي الاكسبيرينس فيه احنا لسه هنبتدي نشتغل بيه لسه الجهاز راكب ولسه هنبتدي نشتغل بيه بس هو مثلا لو ادفانتج مثلا يعني نتكلم على الفولو اب اوف نيو ادجيفنت بيشنتس مثلا هو ات ديتكتس تشينجز ان ذا ميتابوليزم بيفور وي سي ذا مورفولوجي يعني when you are following up a patient receiving new adjuvant therapy we wait until the size of the tumor changes so that we can say that this patient is responding or no but if we do a pen Even without any change in the size of the tumor, we can say that this patient is responding to the chemotherapy that we are giving. For instance, sometimes we tell the oncologist that the patient is not responding, the tumor is the same size, there is no response. He adds another uh, chemotherapy or he changes the drug that he's, give, and he's giving. Okay. But when you know that the, these changes early, you can manage the patient. They say that we can even detect the changes after two weeks of giving uh, the chemotherapy. So if you do this, uh, you, you can tell the oncologist, yes, you are giving the right drug. No, you are not giving the right drug. Add something or change something. Actually, I, I do not still have the experience to tell you that I that ايزوتوبس فما عندهمش الفرق بالكونترست ماموجرافي عشان يقدروا يقولوا لنا الفرق بينه وبينه ايه فغالبا احنا اللي هنطلع الخبره دي قبل بشغلنا يعني لما نشتغل هنبتدي نشوف الفرق بين ده وده او نعرف الفرق بين الاثنين دكتور عائشه دكتور عائشه السلام دكتور عائشه السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام Um, please, I want to ask, does normal breast uh, glandular tissue of the breast enhances post-contrast? Uh, usually it doesn't. Uh, the, uh, I did a study once about the correlation between the breast density and the amount of the background parenchymal enhancement, and I found that the, the, in contrast mammography, uh, there is, uh, يعني, you can see a lot of dense breasts without any enhancement at all. Enhancement. Uh, on the contrast mammography, uh, on the, uh, the on the contrast images, uh, in mm -hmm. some cases, in some cases the, it does, but not uh, not very common. Okay. It's not okay. very common. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Is that good loud effects? Okay. وده كان آخر ده كان آخر سؤال معانا النهاردة. يعني نود التنويه ان النهارده طبعا كان الحضور قياسي النهارده احنا معديين 500 500 طبيب وطبيبه من الساده الزملاء حضروا معانا النهارده واضطرينا ان احنا ننقل اللايف على الفيسبوك والمره الجايه ان شاء الله هيبقى لايف على الفيسبوك هيبقى لايف على اليوتيوب ان شاء الله بنشكر حضرتك دكتوره رشا وبنهني حضرتك وبنهني الساده بس ال يعني المحاضره بقى بعد كده يعني ان شاء الله ان شاء الله بعد اذن حضرتك طبعا وهنبعت لحضرتك المحاضره وهنبعت الفيدباك وبنشكر الساده الزملاء وبنطلب منهم تاني ان هم يملوا الفيدباك استاذه دكتوره رشا بتحتاجوا والساده المحاضرين بيحتاجوا وبنهني حضرتك تاني بخطوه الايجيبشن سوسايتي اوف بريست ايمجينج وبنتمنى الساده الزملاء اساتذتنا والساده الاستشاريين والاخصائيين والساده الزملاء ان هم يبتدوا يكونوا جمعيات اخرى للسب سبيشاليتيز وللتواصل وللتعليم المستمر. انا بس باكد يا دكتور محمد ان في يعني جزء لا يتجزا من الجمعيه طبعا طبعا عشان في ناس كانت فاكره ان احنا يعني جمعيه مستقله وبتاع لا احنا مش كده خالص يعني فاحنا بمجرد ان احنا تابعين للجمعيه المصريه للاشعه يعني بس
واحنا 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 هدفنا التعليم المستمر والتطور المستمر ونبقى في يعني في بلحاق بركب العلم دايما ومتصلين بالعالم دايما واصغر نايب اشعه متصل باكبر استشاري اشعه موجود في العالم بحيث ان الناس كلها تتعلم وبنشكر حضرتك جدا دكتور رشا ومنتظرين حضرتك ان شاء الله في لقاءات اخرى باذن الله شكرا جدا ليكم احنا لسعداء يا فندم احنا لسعداء الفيدباك رائع ويوفقك والله على مجهودك ده فهم. الله يبارك في حضرتك الله يبارك في حضرتك يا دكتور رشا جزيل الشكر لسادة الزملاء وفي انتظار محاضرات قادمة للدكتورة رشا كمال لسادة الزملاء وكل سنة طيبين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مع السلامة